policy of digital pictures these days is quite outstanding. This is never the issue. The only issue is, can you tell a story about your relationship to the world through photography? Today, the viewfinder will have a discussion with Martin Barr, a British documentary photographer, photojournalist, and a photo book collector. Mr. Parr. Hi. We've seen the advancing of digital photography and the growing of digital media, including the social media. Uh, how do you see photojournalism today? And what makes it differ from uh, the, the one when you started? I guess when I started, there were a lot more magazines around that would uh, commission photographers uh, in a proper and serious way. And now that market has shrunk enormously. So I imagine in somewhere like Indonesia, it's very difficult to be a freelance photojournalist. But what we have seen are the rise of two things. First, a print sale, so this is uh, a good way of earning a living that wasn't there, say, 30 years ago, but also the use of social media. So uh, platforms like Instagram, uh, Flickr, uh, Facebook are very important for photographers because they can build up a direct audience. Um, they can have allegiances, they can have people following them. Uh, and of course, I do the same with my own work and with my foundation in, in, in England. Uh, so these are very important and things that are, you know, it means that anyone can look at anyone's photographs throughout the world. So there's a lot to be said for the advances of the technology within photography. Uh, for decades, the printed media has been the main platform for photojournalists to display the, their work. Uh, nowadays, less and less people uh, access news from the printed media. Does switching to videography make photojournalism still captivating and stay relevant? Well, you have film, which is a very effective way of showing what's going on, but the, the images we all remember from the great events of the world are always iconic still pictures, and that's still the case now. So there's a huge argument still for the incredible power of the individual iconic picture. So when we think of something like Tiananmen Square or the, the, the riots and the main things that happen in the world, it's always that still picture that will live in our mind. And that's still the case now. So I think uh, there's a very good argument for the, the power of the still photo is still there, despite the fact that everyone and anyone now can make a film and they can be shown on YouTube, on the TV, on Facebook, whatever. The still picture is still king. So the, the, a good picture still... Uh, still can tell a thousand words uh, by itself. Uh, what can you say to the uh, new generation of visual storyteller? Uh, what do I say to them in Indonesia or anywhere you mean? I, uh, I say that uh, you know, if you get good pictures which are very personal, very subjective about your relationship to the world through photography, then you're going to find that people will want to follow you and uh, you'll be respected. So we have all these different outputs of uh, different ways of getting the work out. And the other thing we haven't touched on so far is the importance of the book. I mean, the photo book in Indonesia is having a real uh, renaissance, and many people are publishing books, and I've collected uh, many photo books from Indonesia. So this, to me, is where a photographer is entirely in control of their own work. They can make a serious statement, they can get the, uh, the, the narrative right, they can get the uh, sequencing right, and they can find, albeit a small audience, a very good audience, which is exactly true to their vision. So this is something that, again, wasn't happening 30 years ago, and I'm delighted to see that Indonesia is taking part in this huge revival of interest, which goes against the grain of the digital period we live in. And uh, can you tell us more about the Martin Parr Foundation? I can. The Martin Parr Foundation was founded uh, last year. Uh, it's in Bristol, which is a big city in the west of England. And here, not only will I preserve my own archive, which is very substantial, but I, I also will promote and collect other British documentary photographers. And uh, we have a gallery and we have a research centre. And please come and visit it. We're in Bristol and we're open four days a week. Okay. Look it up on the, uh, on the website. Uh, during your career, you had uh, published 105 photo books. Yes. Uh, do you uh, reshape your <coughs> approach in telling your story? And uh, what stay and what doesn't? Uh, well, I try and make the book very often in sympathy to the idea behind the, um, uh, the, the subject that I'm exploring through a photo book. I've tried many different ways of sequencing. I've tried many different production values. And, and yes, there's, there's an infinite way that you can tell stories through the, the photography book. And that's something I'm constantly exploring. I'm looking out for other people doing in interesting, challenging ways as well.
Um, in your in your workflow, uh, what 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 gears do you use? I, I use a, a Canon uh, 5D Mark IV. Sometimes uh, I have a Mark III, and I have an RDS, and uh, I have a 24-70, and a ring flash, and a telephoto lens. But basically, I'm usually out with one camera, one lens. I keep it very simple. Okay. I don't want to be cluttered up with equipment. But you know, the uh, the cameras, uh, and they're all good now. I mean, Leicas are great, Nikon's are good. Canon's good. Uh, cameras is, is not the issue really. The only thing that counts is the story behind the lens and okay. what the photographer wants to say about the world. Uh, you also are an avid user of uh, analog, right? Uh, what do you say about uh, it's uh, the digital siblings compared to the analog? Well, I was an analog photographer for 40 years, so uh, the, be the better part of my career was analog. But, you know, I, I was, wasn't very fast to move to digital. It was around 2007, 2008, just when the new generation of DSLR cameras were coming out. And since then, of course, uh, the quality has improved dramatically. So now I can get, uh, you know, a print that's a meter long or a meter and a half long. It'll be very similar to quality to the one I was using with a, a, a medium format camera beforehand, like with a Mamiya or a Plowbell. So the quality of digital pictures these days is, is quite outstanding. This is never the issue. The only issue yeah. is, can you tell a story about your relationship to the world through photography? Okay, Mr. Martin Parr, thank you for your time. Okay, pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. I'm Seto Wardana, the Jakarta Post. <laughs>